to perhaps more complicated classifiers such as SVMs. And those are exactly the same technologies that we use uh, when we work uh, our day jobs. Um, understanding statistics is super important. And again, to be able to do um, postgraduate studies in neuroscience, you have to do that. What, um, what I really mean by that is kind of intuitive understanding of statistics rather than um, mathematical statistics. Um, it is difficult to find. And uh, yeah, I think neuroscientists are a great source of knowledge of statistics. That's quite intuitive. Um, the other very important factor is uh, translating real world into code um, and maths. Right? So being able to look at real world problem um, and formulate it as a mathematical or algorithmical problem. Again, something that we do in neuroscience, or I used to do in neuroscience a lot. And it's exactly what we are doing uh, here these days. Um, and the last point I want to make is uh, that the uh, ability to quickly understand the method is absolutely uh, crucial. So the, the field of data science or AI is uh, so huge that uh, no one knows even a small fraction of it, really. Uh, what is the most important thing for you to be able to do it? is to look at the problem, analyze the problem, figure out what is the best method, then learn about the best method and implement the best method, as opposed to um, kind of just base the solutions on your knowledge. And to uh, finish off, I have five tips on the next slide. So next slide has five tips. Uh, what to do, um, especially if you are a postgrad um, in neuroscience, what to do to prepare yourself for uh, a career in artificial intelligence. The, the first and the most important point that is really non-negotiable is do your next project in Python. Not love is not taken seriously. Um, second point is uh, steer towards data analysis or theory. I was exceptionally lucky that Rick has allowed me during my PhD to be purely theoretical and not deal with experiments and participants, <laughs> which uh, is really beneficial because uh, while experimental methods, uh, especially imaging, are very exciting, working with animal models, super exciting, they are really not transferable skills. So wherever you can, if you want, if you are even contemplating that you would eventually go into AI, try to steer towards theory and data analysis. Uh, my third point uh, is learn basics of decent software engineering. And unlike neuroscience, this is really not hard. Uh, what I'm asking for there is literally spend two days learning how to write tests, how to uh, use the Git version control, um, and just how to really write a code that is maintainable and usable. Um, I think that this is not just about being ready for your career after your postgrad, but this will be very useful for your thesis. And I, I, I wish someone told me that uh, before I started my PhD. Um, and the next point is learn basics of uh, project management. And this is asking to do what? It's really simple stuff. Uh, I would suggest half a day uh, to understand topics such as Kanban or Agile. Um, and again, uh, I can promise that it will be useful while you are working on your thesis or uh, just doing your day-to-day -day work and not just for your future. And the last point is uh, be aware of developments uh, in your fields of interest. Uh, there are quite a few great data science newsletters uh, where you can learn about what's, what's new in the field, what are the new methods. Um, this is not just, again, not just about your future, but also uh, those are sources of methodologies that you may actually find useful in your neuroscience research. Data Science Weekly is my favorite one. The Gradient, the Batch, they are also good ones. Dr. Penguin is uh, one that's specific uh, for um, kind of, um, medical purposes. 
if that's what you're interested in. And also, if you really think about looking for jobs in industry afterwards, then learn a little bit of the business context. If you are if you are interested in working for big tech uh, afterwards, then probably reading MIT Technology Review might be useful from time to time. If you are interested in small startups, tech crunch is probably where you will get your context. Um, if you are looking for jobs in finance, then it's financial times. And I guess that's for consulting as well. And that's all that I have to say. Thanks.